Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are getting ready to start right into the Pulse Programming Activity Guides. Um, I wanna go ahead and kind of frame this a little bit for you. So these first five getting started activities are all meant to be real basic. So the only thing you really need is uh, the Pulse and the individual components USB cable in your computer. We don't need to actually build a robot to do these first five activities. So we're gonna go through those and then we'll move into the remaining 10 activities where we actually need a robot. But um, just to kind of give you an idea of how we're gonna go through this, the, the activities are going to be progressive. You can jump around if you want to, uh, but we would recommend that you go through these in sequence because it's gonna make sense. Everything in the latter, uh, activities are going to build on things that you did in the earlier activities. So just to kind of set a framework for you. Um, I am going to uh, cover uh, or try and, and follow the uh, written instructions from the guide, but um, we'll also then, you'll have this video um, document of how to, to uh, follow those if you really want to do more of the video idea. Um, let's start with um, gathering up everything we need. Uh, obviously we need a computer. We've done the software setup, so it's installed on my computer. We need to have um, the USB cable that came with our pulse. We need to have a pulse. Uh, and then we also need to have a charged six volt battery. That's all of the hardware that we really need to do, uh, gather up for this first activity. As we go through the activities, if we need to add more stuff, we'll make sure that we um, know what that is to do that specific activity. Now, before we get started into the actual activity, there are some housekeeping setup things that we need to do in the software. So I've got the software launched on my computer, and let's briefly kind of go through um, the environment that you're gonna be working in. The Arch Blackly will come up. I'm gonna expand this so that it fills my screen here. And we can see that uh, we've got across the top um, a, an area where we can create and name a program. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, name this just activity one uh, so that we have a name for our, our, our first sketch. Um, and we look directly below that and we have some options here on the left hand side. This is where the drag and drop or the graphical parts of our program are going to go into this area on the left. You'll see that it has some things that look familiar, a little trash can over here on the bottom right. We've got on the left a pulse category. Um, that is where our uh, tool palette is going to be and it is expandable and I can um, expand that and contract it. And then also then uh, our, the Arduino uh, area where uh, all the different main uh, blocks that would apply to any Arduino uh, program are going to be found. The main ones that we will work with, everything in this getting started is gonna be in our pulse environment. So we can just expand that um, briefly. On the right hand side, you'll see a blank area that says source code. And this is one of the really powerful things about this Arju Blockly software is that um, uh, people tend to be intimidated by the idea of coding. This is one of those activities or uh, applications that's gonna take away that intimidation beginning to allow you to actually see uh, and make a connection between the visual drag and drop environment and the text-based environment. And you'll actually see that in a moment um, because this area on the right will dynamically update as I bring over blocks into my environment. So um, that's just kind of a brief overview of the software environment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into this. I'm gonna connect everything up here. So the first thing that we wanna make sure we do is we actually plug our battery into our pulse controller and uh, there's a red white a red and black uh, wire that comes off of our battery and the black is going to go to the outside and it's going to go right underneath our on off switch i can tell if i've got uh, power by when i put on my switch i have a blue power indicating light on my pulse board that tells me i have my battery plugged in correctly um, then i'm going to connect my usb cable and this is a, a standard a to b USB cable, uh, what we used to call the old printer cable. So it has the flat uh, N, the A N that goes into your computer and the B N that goes into your uh, pulse board. We did um, the, this style cable basically for, uh, again, uh, make it classroom friendly 
friendly for the kids. It's a little bit more robust, so that's the connection that we used. Same one that is on the prism board. I can make that connection. I can make sure that my board is turned on. So I have uh, the blue power light, and then I can simply connect it to my USB port on my computer. So now that I've done that, uh, I can go into my software and there are some uh, basic setup that I need to do for my software preferences so that I can actually talk to this board. So if I go to uh, RJ Blockly um, and preferences, and this will, in the guide, there are screen captures that show you exactly how to do that on uh, the Windows PC environment. But you'll see that I, I ended, opened up um, my preference folder and the first thing that we see across the top is I, I need to define where the Arduino IDE application actually lives. So I can open up my applications, I can choose Arduino, and I hit select. And you'll see now that it gives me a directory for where to find the Arduino application. I can actually uh, change where uh, my sketches are going to save to. I like to put things in my document folder and in my Arduino, I have a directory that's all of my Arduino sketches. I can choose that um, directory and you can see that it changed um, where my sketch folder is going to be. I have to choose the type of board that it is. Um, the Pulse board is based on an Uno, uh, Arduino Uno technology. So uh, if I scroll down here, I should see Uno as one of the options. I can choose that and it set the board as an Uno. And then I can go into my COM port, and if I have everything running correctly and my board is turned on, I will see a serial uh, option. And again, I want to make sure everybody understands we, we detail these and show screenshots for the Windows environment in the guide. So once I have those uh, settings made, I can actually um, close that out, and I am ready to actually open up uh, the software. So one of the things that uh, Tammy did a really good job of in the guide is uh, creating examples that are available so that um, for those that are really intimidated by the idea of coding, there is a built-in safety net that will allow you to go ahead and just open up an example. So I can go back up into my menu option. I see that I have a folder that says examples and they're clearly labeled uh, getting started activity one. So I can choose that and it will actually open up my application or the first program for uh, getting started activity one. You'll see that in this environment, now I have these blocks. I can drag those around. Um, but you see on the right hand side that when I, these were imported into the uh, directory, my text environment was actually updated here on the right. Now I'm going to actually um, uh, delete this because I want you to show these, I want to bring these in one at a time so you actually can see how that would, would work. So I'm going to delete everything here. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go ahead and um, bring in one block at a time. And you'll see that when I brought this first block in, um, I have on the right hand side a setup area and a void loop. This is going to give you the basic structure of how your application is going to run. I can go up and I can get a pulse begin block. And when I drag that into my <laughs> run first area on my uh, graphical block, you'll see that it puts it over here in the setup area and includes the necessary text, uh, additional text files that are required for the uh, application to actually compile in the C environment for the Arduino IDE. So you can see this graphic environment makes this very simple and a drag and drop way to bring things over. And it gives you a dynamic update over here on the right to show you what that comparison would be. Um, and I can uh, add things like lights, um, read functions, delay functions, everything that you'll need, motors, servos, sensors, Everything that you will need for these first activities are over here in this main um, programming palette. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Open my first example back up. Well, I don't need to go there. I'm going to go back up here to my examples. Activity 1. 
It gives me my first uh, program. I'm gonna kind of walk through this because basically I'm telling it to begin. I'm gonna uh, access the red light. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna wait for 1000 milliseconds or one second and I'm going to turn it off. I'm gonna wait another second. I'm gonna go back and loop that. So this would create a blinking activity. Um, this is often referred to as a hello world type of an activity, again, because it's typically one of the very first activities that you would do as a coding programmer. So I'm ready to go ahead and download this to my uh, our, uh, Pulse. I click on my our Arduino. It actually opens up very briefly the application. And once that goes away, I can go back into my environment and I can see that it successfully uploaded the sketch. Now, uh, as we did that, I'm gonna hold it this time, I'm gonna do that again so you can visually see. There are some really cool features on the Pulse that actually tell you that things are happening. We should see some yellow data lights as I do that again. So I'm gonna hit uh, download again or upload. And if I look over here on my board, it should go ahead and uh, hit the data lights. And we should see a um, idea, a visual that data is transmitting over. Okay, so we have actually downloaded our code. We saw how the data transmission went across. Now we need to actually kind of execute it and see how that actually impacts on um, a board. So it's real simple. I've got a green light here in the bottom right hand corner of my pulse board that says I'm ready to go. All I need to do is press my green start button and I should see a red flashing light and I do see that. So we are actually executing our first code. Pretty simple, huh? Easy to do and again taking away that intimidation factor. So that was cool, but let's go ahead and, and see how easy it is to make changes. I can stop that by pressing the red button, go back into my code, and I might want to change the duration. As we walk through the steps, I said that I was changing or actually turning on my red light, waiting a second, turning it off, waiting a second, and looping that forever. But it's simple a matter of double-clicking into my numeric uh, parameter there and I can change that and I can say I want to make it go faster so I'm just going to cut that down to 500 and you'll see that as soon as I type that in on the right hand side of my screen right over here I see it dynamically update so that's how powerful this is as far as making the connection between the two the visual environment on the left the text environment on the right and I'm going to change this one as well uh, make it 500 and you'll see again updated on the right hand side so let's upload that to my uh, environment. And I should be able to see here a uh, data light coming on. I think I'm seeing some flashing there. And it tells me that I was successfully uploaded. I've got my green light saying that I'm ready to go here. When I press my green button, I should see my red light flashing just a little bit faster. So again, it's that simple to make changes and actually download it and see the uh, kind of in a very cause and effect way, see the uh, changes that I've made in my code and how that impacts the behavior that I see on the board. Again, this is the power of the programming and what engages kids because they see that immediate uh, cause and effect. Okay, so we've downloaded our first program. We've, we've seen how that works. Let's talk a little bit about the extension activity. Where would you take that from there? And I wanna make sure that everyone understands that the, in our example, of the RG Blockly, there are again um, extension examples as well. So we could actually open one of those up and see that um, that there are some suggestions. Just one possible way that they might modify the program. But the idea is that we've given you the basics of this first activity, and we want you to explore. We want you to try some of the new blocks and see how um, they impact code and, and how it uh, impacts the behavior. So each one of the activities will have extensions that you can uh, suggest that the kids work through as they go through it. But let's also talk about, uh, before we forget, that what's the real world connection for the kids? Because again, we want them to make sure they understand that they're doing this for our purposes. And you know, I'm sure I made the light blink, but 
what's the real impact or importance of that. And the idea is that fundamentally there's a lot of things in our uh, everyday life that it, uh, are revolve around uh, flashing and blinking lights. For instance, traffic lights and, and things that indicator lights on a uh, microwave or things like that, that um, we have to know how to turn those on and off to create those visual signals. So this is a very real world type of an application of what it takes to be program something to be able to just simply blink a light. Whether it's sending a message via a visual uh, light code or just creating a simple on and off. So that's where the real world link would be. Again, we want to make sure that everyone understands that the software does a really good job of creating that block to text correlation. Tammy does an excellent job after each activity to actually detail uh, uh, correlation between the visual block and the text on the right hand side. So that's activity one. Pretty easy, right? So uh, we're going to come right back. We're going to do activity two after I gather up what uh, extra material I need for that. So come on back.